Now, the second head-to-head Conservative leadership debate between Rishi Sunak and Liz Truss was cut short last night after presenter Kate McCann collapsed on stage. Thankfully, uh, Talk TV says she is now well. Now, the two candidates to be our next Prime Minister clashed over the NHS, the energy crisis and tax, with Liz Truss accusing ex-Chancellor Rishi Sunak of being morally wrong over his hikes to national insurance and corporation tax. As well, Kwasi Kwarteng, the Secretary of State for Business, has openly criticised Rishi Sunak's economic plan. He's called it fairy tale economics. Let's take a look at that. What is fairy tale economics is saying that a VAT cut on energy bills would uh, disproportionately help rich families only four months ago and now saying it's a really good idea now. And, and the reason he's doing that is because he's under pressure. He knows that his tax raising agenda uh, isn't working. Uh, to me, it seems strange that anybody could uh, aspire to the Tory leadership essentially advocating uh, tax rises, but that's up to him. But I think he suddenly realised that he's on very dodgy ground there and is now flipping back uh, to saying that VAT uh, should be abolished or reduced on energy bills. That's the fairy tale. I call it more like an about turn, a U-turn, when you realise you're losing. Mm -hmm. uh, but so many of you have been getting in touch and have been getting uh, sharing us your thoughts about the Tory leadership election. And one of you, David, isn't happy about the way we elect our politicians. He says that uh, he wants elections to be held under a more proportional representation system. He says our current options under the limitations present no real possibility of ever having a better party represent us in a real, legitimate and truthful way. Mm, yes, well, we thought we'd organise a debate for David and ask, should we change our electoral system? And what difference would that make anyway? Well... We're pleased to be joined by Dr Richard Johnson, who's a politics lecturer at Queen Mary University of London and Liberal Democrat MP Christine Jardine. Welcome both of you to the programme. Um, Richard, uh, you heard our viewer uh, Dave there tell us his views about why he doesn't think it's our current electoral system is fair. What are your views on that? I think there are some good philosophical reasons why we might want to maintain the current electoral system. It, for me, it comes down to questions of clarity of responsibility and democratic accountability. So what I mean by that is, at the moment, when the Conservatives or Labour put up a manifesto in the election, that's a manifesto that's public before the election, the public can see it, the media will scrutinise them over it. And if they win a majority uh, in, in the House of Commons, they basically have no excuses. They have to implement that agenda. Under a proportional representation system, what's written in the manifesto isn't really worth the paper it's printed on, because those are just going to be bargaining chips for a post-election coalition deal. And at the end of that parliament, when we have hung parliaments, as we inevitably would uh, under, under proportional representation, the parties can just say, oops, sorry, we had to, we had to make a deal we couldn't implement our program. Of course, uh, Nick Clegg even recorded a song about how sorry he was when he had to uh, deal away Lib Dem promises on uh, uh, scrapping tuition fees and, and protecting public services. So that's, that's an, that was an exceptional circumstance under first past the post, but it would become the norm under proportional representation. That would be my big concern. Christine, Christine Jodie, what's, what's your view on this then? Well, I think that's a very narrow view of what proportional representation actually gives us. And it's, you know, it's all based on this idea of only one voice has a right to, to say you, you only have one voice in politics. And for democracy to be strong, the strongest it can be, every voice needs to be heard. And we shouldn't have a situation where only the party, which wins a majority of seats, not necessarily a majority of votes, it doesn't even necessarily have the majority, the support of the majority of the people in the country, gets to dictate what the policy is. That is wrong. And we see it in Scotland, but we have three different types of, of a, a electoral system for each election. We have a single transferable vote in the councils for multi-member wards. We have the De Haunt, um list system plus constituencies, constituencies plus a top-up list in the parliament. And we have first past the post in a general election. And what we found in the last general election was that the Scottish National Party got 45% of the vote, but 80% of the seats under first past the post. So theirs is the voice which is heard. And that is what we see across the UK. We see one voice, the voice which wins a majority of seats 
being the voice in government. Now, there are seats all over the country where the Liberal Democrats are in second place, or the Labour Party for that matter. They're in second place, and that voice is not being heard. The voice of other people is just as important as yeah. the, the one that gets the majority of seats. And that is what is missing without PR. The re one of the reasons I became a Liberal Democrat is because my parents were Conservatives and they lived in a seat which never returned anything but a Labour MP. So they felt that they did not have a voice. That is wrong that anyone feels in a modern democracy that they don't just, have a voice. Uh, just before you go on, just because some people might not fully understand what proportional representation is. So either one of you, who, who wants to explain it? Let, let's go to you, Richard, since you're the politics lecturer. So there are lots of different forms of proportional representation, but uh, PR systems generally try to make the share of seats that a party wins in the legislature align as closely as possible with the share of the votes that it got in, in the general election. Whereas the first pass, the post system uh, means that there's individual competitions in each constituency in the country and the candidate who gets the most seats in each different constituency is the person who, who gets elected. PR systems tend to lead to more parties getting elected to the legislature, but that means that it's less likely that any party will have a majority, which means that PR systems tend to produce coalition governments, whereas first past the post tends to produce a uh, majoritarian government. OK. Uh, and, Christine, I, I do want to ask you about that, because I, I understand that uh, one of the benefits, I suppose, of proportional representation and power sharing, so to speak, is that compromise and that feeling of having uh, the, the wider population represented better. However, isn't it the case that a government elected under first past the post, where there is one governing party, can crack on and get things done quicker and deliver for the public in a more sort of uh, efficient way. Looking at our government at the moment, which was elected in first past the post, the answer would be no. It hasn't cracked on and get anything done. They're fighting at the moment about policy. You have divisions within parties as well. So, you know, what we see at the moment is a government, we've got a zombie government at the moment, which, you know, hasn't dealt effectively with the economic impact of um, the pandemic. We, you know, we, we have now people pushed to the, the point of, of, of strikes up and down the country. That's the government's fault. We've got families struggling because the government isn't able to make clear decisions on the economy. We've, we've now got a, a contest between two members of the same party who disagree vehemently about policy. So to say you elect one policy, you, you elect one party, you get clear government. <laughs> you know, we have the evidence at the moment that that is just not the case. Mm. Well, don't you think, though, that those who wanted to change are those who see that it will benefit in their favour? Because that's what I'm seeing. People want it to change because they realise it will benefit them rather than... Isn't that the case... Isn't that the case with all change? Is that people look at the situation and say, do you know what? It would be better for us if it changed. It would yes, be better but, but, for everyone. But for your part, say, for example, the Liberal And the people who great... want to hold on to it are the people who have an, an unfair advantage at the moment. Yeah, but I suppose can I, can I if you are the party, so for example, the Liberal Democrats, this would be beneficial to them. But as a whole, do you actually believe that if we run this country with sort of different pacts and, you know, because I, 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 I haven't seen us do. Uh, that sort of government, well, we had uh, the similar thing before we had the Liberal Democrats and the Conservative Party who, who were, you know, were sort of like a, uh, this sort of Lib Lab thing going on and it wasn't good. No decisions were really made. This, I don't was, know whether this is in the interest thing. of the country. It, it was a lot better than we've got at the moment, frankly, because you didn't have, you know, you, you had to make a decision which was based on consensus. And we had this in Scotland for two administrations. We had the Labour Party and the Liberal Democrats working together. And you got government which was based on consensus of what was best for the most people. And you had influential voices from different viewpoints, from different points of society. Society. And, you know, anybody who runs anything will tell you that that is the best way to proceed, that you don't just have one voice, that you find a consensus. What, what benefits most people? And that is what you get when you have PR. Mm. Now, the reason that Liberal Democrats are in favour of it, it's not because it would benefit us, but because it would yeah. benefit the people you, of the you country. You get a hung parliament, because Christine. Because of the essential government. R R Richard, let, I just want to bring you in because I could see you shaking yeah. your head. Uh, tell us why you're shaking your head. So... 
fringe parties and minor parties love PR because not only does it give them a greater share of the seats in the legislature, but it gives them a disproportionate say in the formation of governments. And that's the key mm -hmm. thing. So the PR reformers talk about the legislature, but it also has a big impact on the formation of the executive, the government. And quite frankly, I, I can quite understand why the Liberal Democrats would want PR because they, it would make them effectively kingmakers after every election. Right? We haven't had uh, a general election in this country since 1945 where a party has won a majority of the popular vote, meaning that there would almost always be a hung parliament. And the Lib Dems have shown, uh, as has just been said, a willingness to go in with the Conservatives sometimes, sometimes with Labour. And so what yeah. this means, actually, when people talk about fairness, I think it's very unfair that it would mean that the Lib Dems, much like the Liberals in Germany, are the ones who yeah. decide the government. So after the election, after the people have had the say, it's who, who, who they, you know, they can sell themselves to the highest bid, bidder. Is it going to be a Conservative or, or Labour? And that's, that's one of the real concerns I have about it. It's not just yeah. about who's in the legislature, but actually yeah. who's in the executive, who's in government. Uh, 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 and Christine, well, very is, final, just, very final word to you, Christine. The problem. You Very just final illustrated the problem. You said that there hasn't been a government in this country since the war that has won the popular vote. So what you're saying is that we've had government since the war that the majority of people didn't want. Is that fair? Mm. Well, there, but there, there it, it, I, don't, I don't think we I don't think we'll resolve our differences uh, over the next few minutes, sadly. <laughs> but I do thank you both for joining us uh, for that very civil debate. Dr. Richard Johnson, their politics lecturer at Queen Mary University of London and Liberal Democrat MP Christine Jardine. Yeah, no, that's tricky because proportional representation, it often means that a, a swing party, a party in the middle can swing the votes. Yeah, and we end up with the system. Well, we'll have a pact with you and we'll have a pact with you. And we might not actually get the, the public might not get what they want. I think it gives too much power. Yeah, I, I think if we had a... I'm OK with first past the post mm. uh, under the um, condition that we have a very effective opposition. I think that's what's sort of been missing over the last few years, that the country almost feels like it's been just governed by one entity well, and nobody else is challenging that entity. Well, they're challenging themselves, though. I th think if you get, like, this government here, they've been their own opposition, mm. actually. They might mm. as well have been the Labour Party. The Labour Party hasn't needed to do anything, which it hasn't done anything, frankly. But uh, that's... So it doesn't necessarily feel that just because you have the big mm. majority, because yeah. that's not what's happened here. The infighting is horrendous. I mean, but I didn't, massive majority. But I didn't like what happened before either. Do you mm. remember with Brexit and Theresa May had that tiny yeah. majority and then there was also, it was kind of like a hung parliament and she mm. was a minority government yeah. in, and it just doesn't work. What a mess, eh? What a mess. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> the bottom line. Uh, let us know what you think, GBV's at gbnews.uk.